for on the computer. Okay, thank you so much for doing this, Ashley. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you, let you do your introduction and uh, just maybe let everyone know who you are and what do you do? Okay, hi, I'm Ashley Dawson. I am the founder and CEO of Recycle to Riches. <laughs> It is a nonprofit in Los Angeles, and we're changing the culture of consumption through communication, collaboration, and community education. Yeah, I love that. And maybe we start with the basics, like, like what is recycling? Like, just the basics. <laughs> the basics of recycling? <laughs> Yeah, well, recycling could be defined in your own terms, really. Uh, if you wanted to go more municipal, it's just popping your cans and recyclables into the recycling and having a 30% chance of it getting recycled, right? <laughs> um, but if you're talking in regards of actually using and uh, the materials that are already out there in the world, that would be a form of recycling that we like to focus on, which is utilizing everything that's already out there to create resource. Um, and that's a little bit different than the linear recycling system that we have set up right now uh, in our Los Angeles, at least. Let me just speak to my local area. <laughs> no, that's good. And what is the I mean, you've been doing this for like you said 10 or at least you've been in Los Angeles for 10 years, I guess. Tell us what have you learned? Like what are like the through lines? What's like two or three things that you've learned by meeting so many people dealing with so much in this industry? What is your like aha moment? Mm. Well, first my aha moment, I'll say that. And then I'll say three things I learned. My aha moment that started Recycle to Riches was having a marketing class and seeing in marketing that we were actually getting taught the culture of consumption. That's what they said we were learning. And that's what I learned that needed to be changed, the culture of consumption. Why? in marketing would we be learning about the culture of consumption because everyone out there is trying to get your sale. Everyone out there wants you to consume because that's the nature of America and that's the nature of the linear economy. So that was a big aha moment for me when I learned that the marketing out there is geared towards only consuming, consumption only. Um, and that's the shift that needs to change. We do not need to consume new. We all need to consume. I do agree that we're all consumers, but we don't need to consume new or um, closed linear, linear products that make no sense, that just drop off at the end, that I have no clue who made it. I have no idea who's producing these fabrics for me. I have no idea of anything about the linear economy. What I have, I can't even get the details out of the linear economy. They won't give it to you. Um, and so that's kind of the aha moment for me was the fact that in marketing, I was learning about the culture of consumption. And then three things that I really picked up on while I was out here, um, mainly doing my sustainable fashion or, or my internships in fashion actually was the big thing that got me to where I am now. And it was just the fact that I saw the waste and the lies that were in the fashion industry. Um, that was the first, let's say, onion peel that I had to peel off of this onion of sustainability and waste management. Um, and then, yeah, seeing the fashion waste, that really got to me. And then owning my own organization and starting my own upcycled fashion brand, then I realized every avenue of consumption needs help. And then the aha moment came of they're teaching us the culture of consumption in marketing. That's wrong. We need that opposite effect. The people that are making these products should be teaching how to consume them to the consumers and the consumers should know what they're consuming. And then 
I took an environmental science class. And that is what got me to where we are now as a 501, 501c3 nonprofit. Um, and that is our long-term goal of building an actual closed loop community where people can come and see how a low waste closed loop off the grid lifestyle really looks. And it's a pure example of the solutions for our environment are already out there. The solutions for this environmental crisis and energy crisis and water crisis, they're already out there. We just have to implement them. So we have have that broken down on our website under our mission page, you know, six points of sustainability building, building off of Michael E. Reynolds, the, you know, earth ships, um, things like that. So it goes way more into, into everyday living than just fashion now, even though fashion started it all. Sorry, th that was long winded, but <laughs> that's, that's my aha moments and the things I've learned from being out here for sure. No, that's really good. Do you think big brands and small brands have the same responsibility for sort of shepherding consumers into a more sustainable future? I do. You know why? Because all small brands want to be big brands. So if you're not trying to be a big brand and you say you want to be a small brand for the rest of your life, that's amazing. But a lot of brands that start want to be a big brand eventually. So why not start off having those same responsibilities? And the ones that are already big brands, I do feel like they're going to be pushed into this responsibility of, of resourcing responsible. Um, but they're not there yet. And the small brands are the ones that are going to start it. They're the ones that can have that conscient, conscious, constant chatter. What do you think is the biggest challenge that you face with your work? Hmm. Changing the culture of consumption. <laughs> it's, it's literally the biggest uphill battle because you can talk to somebody that loves, and I, this is a real life example, but I won't name names, that loves gardening, loves making their own food and growing it right in their backyard and actually composts everything and is low waste. But guess what? They're in support of Amazon. They love that Amazon can get them anything they want right around the corner for two, two, two days. It's there, delivered. That's a pure example of how it's extremely challenging to show the circular economy um, to everybody because everyone has their own opinion and their own definition and own perception of what the circular economy means. But let me tell you, if you're supporting Amazon, that's not a circular economy unless you have a very, very good specific reason reasoning for purchasing from Amazon, like if it's a complete necessity. But you can always get those items somewhere else. You, you don't need to go there. Yeah. And so is there a when we see like big companies like Amazon and they say, OK, we're going to commit like $10 billion to climate change or to fund other initiatives that are going to kind of help and support like sustainability what is the impact when there's a percentage of a dollar that goes towards that? Or do you see it as it does it not like actually make it to the like front lines, so to speak? No, I mean, if they're partnered with the right partners, considering like one percent for the planet, I'm all I'm all for one percent for the planet. That's an organization that is amazing and takes a percentage of your funds and put it towards either, you know, philanthropy. Um, but it, there's a fine line, right? There's such a fine line. I mean, in my opinion, when I'm consuming consciously and, and when I'm deciding who should get my money, right? Because I work really hard for it. Actually, I don't have much because I volunteer for a sake of the riches, but anyway, when I have it, <laughs> um, uh, that is very, very, very important to know who's getting those funds, right? 
So when you're giving to Amazon, you're not giving to those small brands that are on Amazon. You're you're giving to Amazon mostly. And the small brands are just getting by on Amazon. Um and the brands that are on Amazon are just, you know, there. It's it's wholesale. It's the epitome of the a linear economy for me. But anyway, when I purchase, I would rather see my funds go to somebody I know that made it. It's a company that focuses on 100% organic cotton. And guess what? Most of the brands on Amazon, you can find. You can look them up and then go to their actual website. Go to the brand's website. Don't buy them from Amazon. Go to the website, look at them. Where are they coming from? Is it local? Are you supporting somebody that you want to support? You know, do the research on your brands, no matter what. Even if you're shopping off of Walmart or Amazon, do the research. Um, but the other side of that is, I do applaud the efforts of the big brands that are trying to do what they can do in this just green transition. I'm not going to put down anyone that is trying to put funds into this green economy um, and the transition into it. But I am going to warn consumers um, that they should know where their products are coming from. Um, and they should know who's making their products. Uh, who are the hands that are creating these products for you? I think that's very important to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I, I won't say one way or the other. I do think, you know, I don't want to discourage the corporations for doing what they can do because they should be doing at least the bare minimum. Um, and I would like to see more focus on scope three and 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 focusing on finding out more about our their carbon emissions and focusing on that. What is your actual carbon emissions um, and how are you offsetting it and what are the organizations you're partnering with? That that goes for all all of the big brands. And what do you think is or what big brands do you think are doing it well right now? It's hard to say. <laughs> um, I think if you're looking at big brands, meaning just like the organizations that are doing it right, I could say like 1% for a planet is an organization that is partnering with really um, big organizations, other organizations to help them. Um, then if you're thinking about um, TerraCycle, is another company that is partnering up with other organizations to transition them very well. They're a very big brand. Um, I can simply say, I don't want to say any big brands because I don't necessarily support any big brands to tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> Burt's Bees could be something that is focusing and and working on it and, and semi getting there. Um, that's really it. <laughs> Where do you get your education or where do you recommend like curious people to where should they get education on the topics? Definitely go to recycle to riches dot org and go to our uh, our to our directory. And we have the life cycle analysis that's there. And you can ask all those questions that we ask the brands. You can ask those to anyone that you're purchasing from. Um, and then also, if you just go to a really amazing podcast that I've been getting into lately has been Conscious Chatter. If you look that up, Conscious Chatter has like over a million downloads. It's in a wonderful, wonderful way to get more conscious about your consumption, but not only consumption, overall lifestyle. Can you hear the construction that's happening? No, I can't. <laughs> oh, good. It's happening. <laughs> what about the, so, and then what action? Because I think we definitely can get the education and the information's all around us. But, you know, as they say, we would all be, you know, rich and fit if it was like really easy. So it's like, yeah. what is the action that you think people need to take? 
Yeah. You know, the first thing that you can do is really just start being curious. That's the first action. Start being curious about the circular economy versus the linear economy. If you're just looking into that alone, you're going to find some incredible things that you're going to want to change. Um, so I think just go for that. And hey, there's another documentary that you all should really look out for is Stories of Stuff. It's kind of what got me on this obsession with the circular economy. Stories of Stuff. And who do you go to for like leadership or mentorship in your life? Do you have individuals that are already at a certain epitome of success or how do you kind of you know, find mentors. Yeah, I find, um, honestly, I have to give it all to God. God is my main mentor for sure. I, most things that I need, I bring to him first and he deals with it and then tells me what to do. And I'm like, okay. Um, but for like earthly mentors, I definitely have to say, um, anyone from climate reality, that crew it's another organization that's here in Los Angeles and uh, honestly, globally, um, Al Gore started it. But my chapter, the chapter, the LA chapter of climate reality, I, I can go to any one of them and ask for help. And then also my professor, my environmental science professor is somebody that I I've always gone to for like, hey, do you think this sounds like something we should be focusing on or doing? Um, and then my board, uh, Recycle the Riches board. And, you know, how did you tell, maybe talk about the origin story of Recycle the Riches. How did you, like, how did you get started? What was like step one? Man, step one was like, I was 18 years old. I was trying to change fashion, thinking that everything could be something. Um, typing in to Google, how do you start a company? Um, and then I started Recycle the Riches as a DBA doing business as, and I got my EIN number, did all those amazing steps that you have to do to open it up. Uh, my mom and dad both owned their own company back in Connecticut. So it was kind of like a realistic achievement for me. You know, it wasn't like I couldn't, I've never known otherwise. They've yeah. just owned their own company. So I knew that I could be a business owner, you know, um, and my dad encouraged me to do it. Just say, go for it. You know, you, I, I couldn't necessarily get out of high school and go right into college because I didn't have the funding for it. Um, so I started up Recycle the Riches instead. And then um, I, that was, that was 2018. So 2018 all the way, no, sorry, 2015. Oh my gosh. That was 2015. I started it. And then all the way to 2019, that year, I was at an event, a homeless uh, fundraiser event out in Hollywood, actually, um, the sleep out, it was called. And then uh, the owner of Black Card Circle came up to me, Lote, and he actually said, you know, we got to talking and then eventually he said, I think you should be a nonprofit and we're a nonprofit and we can be your fiscal sponsor. And so they helped us transition right before COVID happened. They helped us transition into the 501c3. Um, and we're slowly building and growing as an organization. Yeah. So that's the origin story. But as we were growing and, and building into a nonprofit, I realized that I can't just have this be a website that people come and shop from. Like that doesn't, that's not the mission that we're off, we're, we're having. So it transitioned into the bigger mission of changing the culture of consumption through communication, collaboration, and community education with a long-term goal of building the closed loop communities here in Los Angeles. And yeah, that's, that's the origin story. <laughs> that's cool. And what's like the best part of your work? 
other people, meeting people like you and just getting connected and seeing solutions like your company and being able to connect, you know, other organizations with other solutions. Yeah. The people and the connections. And then what do you, what do you see? Like, do you have any big goals over the next, I don't know, five years or 10 years that you see for Cycle to Riches and kind of for the different brands and companies that you touch? Like, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, here's the long-term goal of it all. So we do have a reverse engineer system to get to the closed loop communities. And two points that are really going to get us there are the conscious consumer fleets, which we have a goal of creating these hopefully five vans that are transformed into a low waste fleet, we'd like to say, um, all run on electricity, low waste, gray water tanks. Um, the people that know sustainability and low waste will know what I mean when I say all of those things. Um, and on our website, it's broken down what we want in our fleet. Um, those at events, at functions, at different locations around California, showing our goals and our visions for the closed loop communities. Um, that's number one for sure. That's, I would say we are, our goal, I think for that was 2024. So next year we'll be fully ready to start at least one van for that. Um, and then this hopefully will be happening this year, next year, and it goes tandem with the van, a virtual reality of the closed loop community so that people can come, put on the goggles, walk into the community and actually walk around and get to know all of the solutions that are already out there to change their culture of consumption. Um, and we really want this to be a small blueprint for other communities around the world and around America. Number one, we understand that every single solution is going to have to be geared towards that specific biodiversity and that specific environment. No two environment is the same. So we have to focus on the microclimates, not the macro. We just have to focus on the microclimates that are around that area and build communities off of that microclimate. And so how are you going to do it? Like, what's the how? <laughs> how do, are you a vision? Are you visionary more so? Or are you like operational, would you say? I'm a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. So I'm more visual, visual for sure. Um, but the how is all, we already have partners with all of those solutions that are on our website. So it's on our mission page. Um, and all of those solutions are very, very simple to implement at this time. So we would just need land, number one, hopefully donated by our amazing Los Angeles City Council, hopefully, um, or or funded by Recycle the Riches ourselves and our corporate sponsors. Um, and then you start building. The biggest thing that we have to work on right now is policy. So not after the fleets and the actual virtual realities are built, that will give us proof and like actual data to say, look at what we're doing here and and just put on these goggles and see what we're doing and what will be eventually. And that will help us create policy because right now, if we started building, we wouldn't be able to build the closed loop communities legally right now in Los Angeles. So we have to change the policy. Mm. And we have to put one in place that will help us or at least get a grant that is a research grant that will let us do it because that's the same thing that Michael E. Reynolds had to do out in Taos, New Mexico. He wasn't legally able to build sustainably out there how he's building. It's a research grant that he has and the the town of Taos has to go there and check in all the time. You you do a lot of speaking and like uh you have a lot of like panels and things like that. How are, how do you get on these panels and how do you get yourself out there? Uh just go ask. Yeah, <laughs> I 
I, that's the biggest thing that I have to tell everyone. Like, I don't have my a PR team. I mean, I have a very small PR team for Recycle to Riches, but for myself, I don't have anybody that's saying, hey, Ashley should be doing this. And this year, 2021 is the first, sorry, 2023 is the first year that I've actually gotten people coming to me saying, would you be on our panel? And that that's after, you know, since 2015, I've been doing this. So for the first huge chunk of me doing this, I had to be even confident enough to speak. Then I had to be confident enough to reach out to the people I wanted to speak with. And I still get denied. You know, <laughs> I I just applied for an, a speaking engagement. I won't name names that I didn't get into. And I wanted it very, very bad. I wanted to be on that stage. All the people that they had, I wanted to be right there with them. And I have to keep in mind as a white woman, I'm also not the person to be highlighted right now. So most of the time, if I'm applying for something and I get in, I see who else is on the board. What, who else is speaking with me? Am I the only one? Okay, that's great. If I'm the only one, I have to highlight the people that should be highlighted within my presentation, right? That's how, that's my responsibility. But if there's not enough diversity on that panel, I have to choose to say, hey, I think maybe my slot should be given to somebody else if you have the opportunity to. You know what I mean? That's my responsibility as a white woman that has privilege in general to give that slot up right now. It's not my time to shine. So at this time, I'm very, very picky with who I speak with and who, who I let highlight me because of the fact that I, it's not my time to shine, <laughs> you know? Shout out to you for uh, self-awareness and uh, having a perspective. What, how do you handle, like, just in general, like, rejection? Just how do you overcome that? Because I definitely, I mean, we're not going to shoot every shot and make every single shot, but how we kind of handle those, like, misses, if you will, or, like, either it's an opportunity to learn or it's an opportunity to maybe discover something about ourselves. But I'm curious, how do you handle um, rejection? So I've been falling on my face since I was born. <laughs> you know, you try to walk a couple of times and you fell. You know, it's the same exact thing. You just get back up and try again. Um, and then you'll eventually be running. Um, but the biggest thing is, it's not my, it's not my time. That's not what God wants for me. You know, that's exactly what I have to keep in mind, whether you call it the beyond, um, or God or whatever's your higher power, whoever's guiding you and bringing you to where you want to go, whether it be your ancestors or whatever, you know, that that's not the path that they want you on. You know, if, if it's a rejection and some are harder than others to like swallow, you know, because, just like I said, that panel I really wanted to be on, I, I didn't get. And you just have to be like, okay, next year, I'll do it again. You know, I'll apply again next year. And you just come to the conclusion that the things that you're set up for, uh, the table has already been made for you. What do you think is like your best skill set? Bullshitting. No, <laughs> um, talking, honestly, talking is my best skill set. Uh, trying to also like explain very complex situations into like a very low understanding kind of way. Like I can explain the linear economy and the circular economy without being so scientific with it, you know, yeah. break it down into a very uh, digestible format and how do you improve and how do you kind of get better consistently right now it's my education going to school has been what has been keeping me sharp honestly and I think I might always want to be going to school <laughs> I'm currently going for my global sustainability degree and policy making um and that's going to be at UCI so I'm doing that right now and it's keeping me sharp <laughs> and what do you hope to gain from 
that education like what can you use what can you do with that that you can't do now well the biggest thing is if if the fallback plan honestly for me like if recycle to riches eventually can't pay me a salary that i can live off of i'll have to go and get an actual full time job that can pay me a salary so that's that's the biggest thing right now if i apply to different jobs yes i have the experience but i don't have that four year degree to lay on and say no everything i've experienced actually is for something. It's sad that that piece of paper defines you these days in America, but it does. And what do you want the people to know, like the listeners, what, what's like a, a last thought or a closing thought you want them to walk away with? Be curious. Be curious of your consumption. If you have something that's you're wondering who made it, just look into it. If you can't find that information on the website, go ask them, email them, find an email, contact them. Like this is really important for consumers to start asking the right questions. So just be curious. I know it, it sounds very intimidating, but if you just ask the right kind of questions that are already set up on recycletoriches.org for you under our R2R directory page, just be curious, ask those questions. And where can people follow you? Recycle two with the number riches on everything. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. We got it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for doing this, Ashley. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, Hamilton. Thank you so much.